Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, he'll do it again for you. He'll do it again. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Look at your neighbor. Take a look at where you are now. And where you've been. Hallelujah. He'll always come through for you. It's the same now. Hallelujah. Take a moment and worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your voice unto the Lord. Somebody shout with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Claim your family right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Just before we make transition here this morning, I want to uh, just clarify this. Over the, the last month, our prayer focus has been on teachers and, and schools and students. And so uh, we have a letter here to Doug Doyle. Uh, he's the principal uh, at Summerside Intermediate. Uh, we have a letter to Sandra J. Uh, she is the principal at uh, Greenfield. Uh, uh, Jerry McCauley is the principal at Athena, just over here. Three Oaks, uh, Jeff Klo, and to Nick Martin. Uh, he is at, at Parkside. And also to Tracy uh, Bolio, which is at um, Elm Street. And so uh, let me just read this uh, Greetings in the precious name of Jesus. On behalf of the congregation at Summerside United Pentecostal Church, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you and the staff. Uh, this is to Doug Doyle at Summerside Intermediate for dedicating your lives to the education and future of our children. We have a prayer team that meets every week. And this past month we have been praying specifically that God will protect our teachers and students from harm Give students a desire to become leaders with courage to lead in righteousness and that teachers will have wisdom to help mold young minds into the same. We extend grace to you in all your work and remain committed to supporting you in prayer sincerely. If you've been a part of our team over the last month, uh, I want to encourage you to, to come and sign your name uh, on this letter. And uh, just be careful if you're here this morning, put something underneath so we don't poke through we like the... Uh, but if you've been praying this month for teachers and in our focus, uh, this coming month we're on to mayor and council. And every one of them is going to get a letter from us. Praise God that we're praying, amen, that God is going to set up things for a massive revival in Prince Edward Island. of The Holy Ghost and fire. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. So keep praying. Keep coming. Amen. And I'm inviting you today uh, to turn with me in your Bible. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What an exciting day. Amen. Praise the Lord. What an exciting day. Hallelujah. Praise God. First Samuel chapter 9. Hallelujah. Why don't we just give a praise unto the Lord for, for Carrie and her family here today. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. First Samuel chapter 9. Amen. Hallelujah. And we're going to read the first four verses there. Amen. First Samuel chapter 9. And we're going to read the first four verses. If you could read along with me this morning. Amen. Now there was a man 
of Benjamin, whose name was Kish, the son of Abiel, the son of Zeror, the son of Bechorath, the son of Aphia, a Benjamite, a mighty man of power. Amen. Help me now. And he had a son whose name was Saul, a choice young man and a goodly. And there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he. From his shoulders and upward, he was higher than any of the people. And the asses of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. And Kish said to Saul, his son, Take now one of the servants with thee, and arise and go seek the asses. And he passed through Mount Ephraim and passed through the land of Shalisha. They found them not. Then they passed through the land of Shalom, and there they were not. And he passed through the land of the Benjamites, but they found them not. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's just pray one more time. Thank you for standing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I pray right now that, that Lord, you will just open every heart and every mind here today minister to us God about the time that we're in hallelujah the season of destiny the purpose that's in our lives hallelujah praise God you are here today to draw us into your marvelous work in the name of Jesus praise God praise God turn to your neighbor and and say neighbor come on somebody neighbor forget about your donkeys Hallelujah. Forget about your donkeys. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask Brother Brother Richard to come up this morning and help me. Uh, and uh, he's, he's going to play an important part here this morning. Now, yeah, just... Just come right here. Praise God. If you're seated here, we'll be approximately the same level. <laughs> Praise God. Now, the Bible says uh, that Saul was, was uh, a goodly. Amen. There was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person. Now, the idea here is that there, there wasn't a better looking guy in the whole country. Praise God. And he was, he was head and shoulders above everyone else. Praise the Lord. And so where he, uh, where he traveled, he was accustomed to, to uh, you know, people taking a second look at him. And uh, he, was, he was a bashful man uh, from a very small tribe. And uh, it seemed to be uh, that he had some affluence. And this particular day, he took a journey to look for his father's donkeys. And the Hebrew word here uh, would indicate that they were, they were female uh, donkeys. And so um, there was also the idea of, of breeding and uh, an importance that, uh, and the custom was that these uh, female donkeys would be given a little more freedom than the others uh, to graze, and so they had taken their leave and gone clear out of the country. And so Saul uh, takes his father's direction and goes on a journey to uh, help uh, maintain the, the affluence of their family, to maintain the, uh, uh, the financial... Uh, holdings and standings of of their family, and so he sets out on this journey. Uh, he is he is big, he is beautiful, and he is bashful, and he is a Benjamite, and he's head and shoulders above everyone else in the country. Praise God! And so his name means desired, desired. Praise the Lord. And 
he comes to this this uh, place of of not being able to to find the donkeys and he goes uh, right outside of his home territory so he's in a he's in a uh, out of his comfort zone trying to maintain uh this uh, search and find the donkeys and they come to this idea that we're going to we're going to ask the prophet we're going to ask the man of god where to find the donkeys and as they're going up to the city of the man of god they pass by some maidens and they ask him is is the prophet is the seer in and and they tell him yes he's he's there hurry up and and so on their journey they are and as he comes to this place where he meets the prophet he's actually talking to the prophet but he doesn't know who he is and he's asking the prophet you know where the man of god is so we we get from this that he he hasn't spent any time uh, around the prophet, around the man of God. He, he, he doesn't recognize him. And uh, so he finally gets to meet uh, the prophet. And that brings us to, to verse 20 of this chapter 9 in 1 Samuel. So I want to take a, a reading here this morning. Praise God. And... And verse 19, we'll start, and 20 is where we're going to take our thought from here today. But, and Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer. Go up before me into, unto the high place, for ye shall eat with me today. And tomorrow I will let thee go, and I will tell thee all that is in thine heart. I'm going to tell you what your questions are. There were things deeper inside the man than the donkeys. But for now, that task had consumed him. I want you to to know today that there are deeper things inside of you than the donkeys in your life. But there are times when the donkeys consume us. But God is here this morning to tell you all that is in your heart. Hallelujah. God is here to speak to you about all that is in your heart. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then he says in verse 20, And as for the donkeys that were lost three days ago, set not your mind on them, for they are found for they are found and on whom is all the desire of israel is it not on thee and on all thy father's house there are deeper things in you saul than the donkeys but right now what you need to do is forget about the donkeys because all the nation is looking unto you what it is that's inside of you, all of the nation is looking for right now. And I'm preaching to you this morning. You're not here by accident. You didn't just stumble into this place, whether you've been here a first time or whether you've been here a, a thousand times. You are not here by accident, but you are here looking. And sometimes on a Sunday morning, there's people that come to church and they're looking for the donkeys. Hallelujah. But there's a word from God here this morning that's saying there are things deeper in you than the donkeys. And what you need to do is forget about the donkeys. God is going to take care of that. But the whole world is looking after what it is that's inside of you. Ah, what's inside of you? And Saul answered, and he said, am, am not I a Benjamite? Of the smallest, somebody says smallest, of the tribes of Israel. Now, he was the tallest, but he came from the smallest. Hello, somebody. He was the tallest. He was was beautiful. He was bashful. He was a Benjamite. But as he begins to describe his home, he, he says, it's the smallest 
of the tribes of Israel. And my family, the least, somebody said the least. Uh, you know, Benjamin is the smallest. And, and, and in terms of Benjamin, you could break it down. Of all the families that are in the smallest tribe, my family is the least of the smallest. So his estimation of his own insignificance was great. Hence his consumption with small things. But there was a call that day. What he didn't know was that there had been a movement in the nation to find a king. And God had finally reluctantly relinquished them to their idea. And there was a search on for a king. So while Samuel was searching for a king, Saul was searching for donkeys. But those two searches collided on this particular day. God ordained. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I feel that sense of destiny here in this place today. I don't know who's here in terms of what it is that God specifically has in plan for your life. But I feel the presence of a destiny that is so heavy here this morning that it has not only attracted the glory of God, it has attracted the confusion of hell. Because he wants to interrupt God's plan. Hallelujah. Praise God. And he gives him three signs. He gives him three signs. When he leaves that day, after he takes the head of the table and all of that blessing is put upon him, and, and, and Saul, being, being a, a handsome man and, 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 and a, a, a big young man, uh, is so bashful. He comes from such a small a small family in a small tribe, and he's so bashful, uh, and, and he's, he's uh, seeing all of this, this honor bestowed upon him, and he's not understanding everything that's happening. But as he departs on the next day, there are three signs that the prophet says are going to occur. Number one, the donkeys are going to be found. Praise God. In other words, there was a completion of something that he had been searching for and God was saying I'm going to take care of that and I'm, I'm calling you to a higher level I'm going to deal with that search in your life and, and I would to God that somebody would hear in your spirit today the search is over hallelujah the search is over the donkeys have been found. The things that I have been worried about for years. Hello, somebody. The things that have been stressing me out for years. I'm not talking about sinful things. I'm talking about worldly pursuits and trying to make all the dots connect and trying to make life happen. And the Lord is saying the first sign you're going to get is something is going to come into your spirit. Ikosahaya. Hallelujah. That I'm taking care of all that. Praise the Lord. And the Lord is here to tell you, amen, seek first the kingdom and all these things shall be added unto you. Your search is over. Hallelujah. Praise God. The second sign that he was going to get was bread. There was, there was some couple of guys that were going up to sacrifice and they had three loaves of bread. They were going to give him two. Amen. That part of their sacrifice was going to come to him. He was going to partake of their sacrifice. Praise God. And there is bread here today. Amen. When you uh, repent of your sins, when you believe in Jesus Christ, when you take on his name in the, in the waters of baptism, when you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, there is a partaking of his body, of his uh, broken body. We've been given that bread. The sign is here this morning. 
Hallelujah. And the third sign was that he was going to be going up to the hill of God. And there were going to be all these prophets, sons of the prophets there. And they, got, they had, uh, you know, flutes. And, and, and they had uh, tabrets. And they were going to be worshiping. And he was going to come upon this company of worshipers. Hallelujah. And the prophet said to him in, in verse 6 of, of, uh, of chapter 10. Verse 6 of chapter 10. There was an anointing that was given. But the prophet said, The Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and thou shalt be turned into another man. Hallelujah. Thou shalt be turned into another man. Praise God. Praise God. That's the third sign as they begin to worship. I can't tell you today enough about how that I have time and time again in my life walked back up the mountain in days of uh, uh, deception in days of discouragement in days of uh, impending depression I walk back up the mountain hallelujah into the tabrets into the pipes and the flutes uh, of those that were prophesying and begin to worship the Lord I'm telling you here this morning the devil would like to shut down your worship he would like for you to sit in the presence of God and do nothing and keep your mouth closed and keep your hands at your sides but I'm preaching to you here this morning that there's another sign when you begin to enter into that place of worship hallelujah God will turn you into someone else hallelujah and that someone else is the design and destiny of your life that is where you will accomplish the dreams that percolate inside of your soul the words that God has spoken to you in years gone by come up the hill lift your hands hallelujah and the spirit of the Lord will come upon you. I have watched it all over the place in my travels. Hallelujah. As people would begin to worship the Lord. I watched a man way up north one time. And, and uh, he, I had preached. Uh, this was in Pekanjikum, which is a remote uh, uh, reservation. You had to fly in there. And I was preaching a revival there. And this man, uh, after I had preached, he came down to the altar and uh, he just stood there. He just walked to the front of the church and stood there just like this with his eyes closed. Nobody had called him. Nobody stood with him. Nobody, you know, got him by the arm. He just walked up there and stood there. And I went over beside him, and, and I knew in my spirit that he was there because he wanted to be there. But he didn't know what to do. All he knew was, I'm going down to that altar. And I walked over to him, and I said, Sir... God wants to hear your voice. God wants to hear your voice. See, the devil is lying to people today. He's lying to people today. Jesus talked to a deaf and a dumb spirit. And he said, come out. And there is a deafness and a dumbness that wants to come upon the church of the living God today. And quiet us down and shut us down. And we'll just go internal with all this spiritual exercises. You know, the Bible has a lot to say about shouting unto God with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. About praising him in the, in, in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. Praise Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so it's not about volume. He wasn't very loud. But I listened and just real quietly he began to, to mouth words. Hallelujah. And talk to Jesus. I said, you don't have to have any sort of prayer language or, or big words. He's your friend. Begin to talk. He, he, see, the prophet said, I'm going to tell you what's in your heart. And as you're talking to God, he's going to reveal to you what's in your own heart. Hallelujah, because you don't even know what's deep inside of you. You're distracted at times. I'm distracted at times. We're on a donkey search, but we're in the presence of the King of Kings, and He's fixing you to, to anoint somebody that's going to rule. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I saw ye katahaya koramaya. And as you begin to worship the Lord, he's going to begin to reveal things that are, that are in your own heart. Hallelujah. Praise God. And all of a sudden, you know, he started talking. And all of a sudden, a little hand went up and a tear started rolling down his cheek. In a few minutes, 
He started just quietly speaking in other tongues as the Holy Ghost filled his life. Hallelujah. Praise God. There was an anointing that came upon him that day. Hallelujah. An anointing. Verse 9 of the same chapter 10, it says, God gave him another heart. Praise God. Praise God. Another heart. God gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. Hallelujah. Praise God. But something happened to Saul. And I'm going to finish this part of the story. And I need, I need some help this morning. Maybe Josh and, and uh, Shane, if you could come. Uh, and, and what we need is we need you to bury Saul in the stuff today. So you can just lie down. This is the day you've been dreaming of. You know, you could, you could sleep all the way through the rest of this sermon and nobody will, will know and somebody else in here is going to be jealous. He's going to be jealous here this morning. Praise God. So, so they're just going to bury him in the stuff. Um, so we'll have to take the chair out because I think you're going to have to get lower in order to bury us. So you've got to lie down. Is that all right? Let's, let's have him just, just lie down and we'll see if we can cover him in the stuff. Now, um, as, as this went on, uh, Samuel went and he called all of the, okay, sure. <laughs> but he doesn't get to lay on the cushions. He, the cushions got to go on top, yeah. I deeply apologize. <laughs> so let's see. Yeah, don't put any hard things This guy here is going to top it off. Yeah. Yeah, just, yeah, don't bonk him with, with the guitar. He'd come out of there quicker than he went in. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Somebody said, forget about your donkeys. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so Samuel calls all the people together. All of the nations uh, come together and uh, uh, all of the country comes together and they're gathered there and he begins to take lots. And so he, as they're, as they're taking lots, people are being selected. You know, all the stuff was in the back of Saul's mind. Strange conversations. And on the way home, he met one of his uncles. Yeah. And his uncles, you know, he, he says... You know, they get into conversation and, and he tells him, you know, you, you met the prophet. He said, what did the prophet say to you? Well, he said, my donkeys have been found. My donkeys have been found. But all this kingdom stuff, he didn't say nothing. Kept it in his heart. Bashful. Trying to understand all of what he had heard. Praise God. And you might be there today. I believe there's people here today that have heard things from God in your past that you still don't get. You haven't figured out this kingdom stuff and this, this business of destiny and purpose. Praise God. Hallelujah. But I'm, I'm preaching to you here today that, that there is an anointing there is an anointing. Praise God. There is an anointing. Can you help me and just, just tape this right, right here for me this morning? There is an anointing. Hallelujah. And if you will worship, if you will open your heart up to the Lord, you're going to understand things that have been deposited deep within your spirit. See, as adults, we, we, we spend a lot of years looking for donkeys. We spend a lot of years trying to find something and connect it to our purpose. But there's stuff in us that's deeper than donkeys. 
And we, we don't get it. We don't grasp it. But the Spirit of the Lord is, is going to come. There's going to be an anointing that's going to fall on you. When you come to the altar and you begin to lift your hands and open your mouth and just say, Jesus, ah, just, could you help me find my donkey? Could you help me find what I'm looking for? And all of a sudden, things are going to be revealed in your spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so this tremendous anointing had come. And this particular day, all the nation had gathered together and Samuel was there. And I, I believe that, that, that Saul was there. And uh, maybe he was at the back of the crowd. Maybe he was hearing all what was going on. He was somewhat distant. I don't think he was in the front row particularly. There was some stuff that was bothering him. This anointing. Is Saul among the prophets? Like people were saying, I know this kid. I know his family. And this is a switch. Hello? Anybody ever had that, that testimony that said, I, I, I watched how you lived your life and now, now spiritual stuff? Like they're, they're going, uh, you know, is, is Saul among the prophets? There's been a... There's been a huge trend. I never would have guessed. Hello, somebody. I never would have thought that, that they would have become that. <laughs> Praise God. And so here he is at the back of the crowd, and, and there's fixing to be something public happen here. They're going to announce a king, and they're starting to, to look across the nation and select tribes. And all of a sudden, Benjamin, whew, you know, now we're down to, 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 the, to the right tribe. And now they're, they're doing their selection process and they come down to the, the house of Kish. <laughs> and Saul has, during all this time, backed his way out of the crowd, so to speak. And he has backed his way into the luggage, into the stuff. And he's buried there with, with this anointing, with, with these signs that have come to pass. He's back underneath the stuff and I'm preaching to somebody today it's time to come out from underneath your stuff it's time to come out from underneath your luggage because there's an anointing that God has determined and de destined for your life hallelujah and he's fixing to connect you to your purpose hallelujah he's fixing to connect you to your purpose Hallelujah. Your purpose is much more than just finding uh, y y your father's animals. There is a worldwide purpose. Listen, we're in the middle of a nation that is in a deep struggle. The struggle in our nation is not for political correctness. It's not a struggle for tolerance. Hello, somebody. It's not a struggle against discrimination. It's a struggle against the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Everything in this nation got a voice. Everything in this nation is encouraged to have a voice. Accept the God of the Bible. Accept the Jesus of the Bible. This is an hour that's looking for a king. It's looking for young men and women of destiny who will come out from underneath their luggage. Hallelujah. And step to an anointing it hallelujah that's gonna bring us to our purpose see this is what you've been called to what did he say uh, of esther who could know if you weren't called to the kingdom for such a time as this god didn't arbitrarily place you here on a sunday morning in a one god apostolic holy ghost filled jesus named church there is a selection there is an anointing and there is an appointing and it's connecting you to your purpose and i'm calling somebody here this morning to rise up hallelujah come out from the baggage hallelujah praise god praise god praise god hallelujah praise god Praise God. And so they said, well, Saul was taken. And so they started looking for Saul. Where is he? He's not there. And so they had to go back and get a fresh revelation from God as to where he was. Hallelujah. Praise God. God knew where he was. Hello, church. I said, God knew where he was. 
<laughs> he's taking a step back. He wasn't following donkeys this particular day, but he was underneath the baggage of life. He was not only underneath his own baggage, but he was hiding underneath everybody else's baggage. I've met people that were caring people, that were compassionate people, but they were broken down because they were trying to fix everybody else's problems. They were carrying everybody else's baggage. Hello. Praise the Lord. You know, deep inside that heart of compassion, God has a plan for you. The good news is you can't fix everybody else's problems. And the good news is Jesus can use you to be a vessel of anointing that can bring them to the solution. And that solution is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. So whether you go back to Kent tomorrow or whether you go back to Fitz and Snow tomorrow or whether you go back to, to a place of retirement tomorrow or whether you go back to the school tomorrow, hallelujah, I'm here to preach to you this morning. Don't follow the donkeys, but follow your destiny, hallelujah. Follow your purpose and let it unfold. Go in there praising God. If you're looking after some children, go before those children like Saul with a worshipful heart and spirit. And who could know if one of those children is a missionary? Hallelujah. If one of those children is an evangelist, oh, to live a life so full of purpose. When you walk into the classroom on a Sunday morning or even on a Sunday here in a service to look into the eyes of people that God has a plan. I believe in you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Look at your neighbor and tell him, I believe in the purpose that God has in your life. Come on, do it. Would you turn to him and tell him, I believe in the purpose that God has for you in your life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. You might think that beautiful people don't have insecurities. Hello? You might think that big, tall people don't have insecurities. Saul had insecurities. Praise God. And he increased the more in strength, the Bible says. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Saul, Saul. Amen. Amen. Are you awake, Saul? Are you awake? Let's see if we can. Oh, I see some movement. Whew. There's a little donkey up there. I think he's a donkey anyway. Praise God. This donkey, he says, you're loved. Let's see if he can get out of there by himself. Saul, Saul. Isn't it hard for you to kick against the pricks? Hallelujah. Rise up and walk in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's give him a hand. Amen. Thank you, brother. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. What an anointing that day. But oh, there's a chilling verse I want to bring to your attention here this morning. If you could bring it up for me. And it's found in 1 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 17. And Saul came to a crossroads in his life. See, he went from being bashful, big and beautiful, Benjamite to king of the nation and he became a hero in his own sight and we're living in a culture that's that's desiring to make heroes out of our young people they are focused on the flesh they call it American Idol they call it all sorts of different things and and uh, and so there is this the search for an idol, search for a hero, search for a Messiah complex that someone will come that will change everything. And so the, there's something that is so important that we address here today. Amen. And it is this word, obedience. Obedience. You're going to turn your iPod into an A-pod here this morning. I might as well put this one up. Obedience. Can somebody say obedience? And this verse says, and Samuel said, when thou wast little in thine own sight. Somebody said little. Benjamin was the smallest tribe. Kish 
was the smallest family in the smallest tribe. And Saul was, was big. He was beautiful. But he was small in his own sight. He was little in his own sight. And that's where God called him from. Wast thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? So I'm preaching here for a moment this morning about obedience. You have to be obedient to the revelation that's in your life. Hello? Not everyone will always agree. Not everyone will always accolade. But when God speaks in your spirit, you must obey that revelation. When He fills you with the Holy Ghost and He begins to talk to you about things. And we're in a day where people are saying, well, I don't have to do that. They don't do that. I don't need that. Those people don't. Listen, when God is not just dealing with those people, He's bringing revelation to you. And there are things in the Spirit spirit that you're going to step into that are going to push back demonic realms there are aspects of holiness that people struggle with today because they say well that's not my preference but they don't understand we're in a world that's got an identity crisis and, and it needs a church that's going to say I'm a man of God I'm a woman of God and I've stepped into this place not just because it's my preference but because I got a divine revelation of a place that he's given me of an unction of an anointing of a purpose and I'm going to walk in it. I'm going to be obedient to it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not arrogant about it. Not prideful about it. Amen. But, but humble about it. Understanding I got this from the Lord. And so I'm going to carry it in my smallness. But God in my smallness is going to use me to push the Philistines out of the territory. And let my family go free. Sokoramahaya. I've got to close here this morning. Let me just give you a couple of things. God gave him power, prestige, and position, but he began to follow his own lead. He went back to chasing donkeys, only these donkeys were defending his own insecurities. Anyone ever had insecurities before? As a father, you get insecurities. And when your children transition into different levels, you get insecure. You can handle them when they're 5, 6, 8. But when they get 16, 18 and they're their own person and they start pushing back at your character and you start button heads with stuff that's still unresolved in your own life. Hello? And now, now you're not only looking at them but you're looking at yourself in the mirror because there's things that you haven't resolved that have come up and now you're getting insecure. Now you're beginning to overreact. Now you're making decisions that are based on... Listen, I'm telling you here this morning, don't give in to the devil's lie. You were anointed at the beginning and you can be successful all the way through. But you've got to learn to lean on Jesus. You've got, oh, Samaya, you've got to trust Him in every hour, in every season. There can't be a place where you fall back to follow in your own lead. You've got to say, I followed you to repentance I followed you to baptism I followed you to an unction I followed you into a highway called holiness and I'm going to follow you through the teenage years I'm going to follow you in the retirement years oh praise God I got to where I'm going by obedience and this has opened the door to my destiny and I'm still on it hallelujah praise God oh I feel like preaching here this morning now if you try to balance on your own pedestal you end up at the mercy of your own insecurities and you may be hiding today among the stuff of an unproven bashful spirit but God is on a search for a king and I believe there's kings and queens in this house today hallelujah you might be hiding oh God break out from all that baggage and stand up head and shoulders above the people not because of your physique not because of your natural beauty but because of the glory of God that's on your life Hallelujah, because of an anointing that came on you up the hill that day. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you all right this morning? Praise God. Let me, let me wrap up with this. Acts chapter 9, verses 1 to 4. There was a man. The Bible says he was of the tribe of Benjamin. And his name was Saul. And Saul was on the way to Damascus, and in his fist were letters, letters to kill Christians. Hundreds and hundreds of years later, Saul is chasing donkeys. 
of his own idea of religion. His own idea of religion that had come from his forefathers. But there was a massive change that was fixing to touch Israel. That was going to shake the world. And he was zealous. He was doing what he thought was the right thing. Come on, folks. We surrounded by folks that are following tradition and they think with all their heart they're doing the right thing. What do you see? You see a rebel or do you see an apostle? You see somebody uh, that we need to, you know, just, just uh, you know, tear them up and turf them out? Or do we see like God sees somebody that could flip the Gentile world right side up? I believe there's people all over this island that could become the greatest apostolic evangelist the world has ever known. They're just being faithful to what they think is right. But there's coming a day following their donkeys where they're going to meet a light on the road. Hallelujah. Praise God. God himself will step into that arena and speak to them. Isn't it hard for you to kick against the bricks? And two questions arise from that encounter. Number one, Saul said, who are you, Lord? Hallelujah. Who are you? I'm confused about who you are. I don't know how many I see. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. But the Lord said, I am Jesus. Hallelujah. I believe there's a Jesus name revelation that's coming to Canada, that's coming to North America like you've never seen. I'm going to preach it until I can't breathe no more. I'm going to believe it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Not because I want to be right, but because I believe destiny it's my purpose forget about you donkeys the world is needing to see the king and so there he was who art there Lord the second thing he was he asked anybody know the second question what do you want me to do I am Jesus oh no oh no oh no what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? He said, you're going to go to a man named Ananias, and he's going to tell you what to do. Hallelujah. And Ananias was over there praying, just like Samuel and Saul. <laughs> he was praying for revival, and God was sending revival. And Ananias was going, no, not him. <laughs> not that guy. He is a Christian killer. And the Lord was saying, he's on his way to your house. <laughs> Praise God. You're going to anoint him. And I'm going to use him because I got a purpose for Saul. Hallelujah. Praise God. I got a purpose for Saul. He's going to stand before the Gentiles. He's going to stand before kings. And he's going to stand before the Jews. And he will suffer. He caused others to suffer. And he's going to suffer. But he's going to suffer for my name. Hallelujah. What will you have me to do? And God blinded him. He was blind, period. Hello? But he didn't know it. Praise God. Saul was big, but little in his own sight and didn't recognize his greatest attribute. Was his own smallness in his own sight? Wasn't his beauty? Wasn't his height? It was his humility. But he didn't recognize it. But God... Look beyond all that superficial stuff and saw something inside. And here is Saul on the way. And the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus, the Lord calls him out. Saul, Saul. Hallelujah. Praise God. And he got healed and filled with the Holy Ghost and baptized in the name of Jesus. And then he went away for three years into the wilderness trying to sort all this out. God, I got questions. I've studied all my life. And, and I fought this thing with everything that's in me. I've killed people. I've imprisoned people. It, the Bible says, well, well, he was yet breathing out threatenings and slaughterings. One translation says he was entirely out of breath threatening and slaughtering. <sighs> I mean, he had expended himself. Hallelujah. And when he came back, thank God for Barnabas. Thank God for Barnabas is in the church. Come alongside and know sometimes a lot of people even in the church don't believe in us. Hello. 
Praise God. Don't, don't get weirded out because sometimes people in the church don't understand your calling. That God will send a Barnabas to you. Stand still. Believe the doctrine. Hallelujah. And hold on because God's going to use you in a powerful way. Praise God. Be true to, to what's been revealed to you. Be true to what's been revealed to you. And don't let anybody shake you off your obedience because that's going to unlock your destiny. Unlock your destiny. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm going to impact the world. Now, I'm going to close with these two, two points. Why did Saul become Paul? Why did Saul become Paul? Anyone ever ask that question? And, and here's the verse. I'll, I'll give it to you. Um, in, in the book of Acts, chapter 13 and verse 9. Praise God. If somebody can come and help me close here this morning with the, with the music. But I want you to hold close to these two last points. Praise God. Praise God. Acts 13. Then Saul who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him. Now some would like to say that God changed Saul's name on the road to Damascus. But there's no record of God ever changing Saul's name. In fact, here we are partway through the narration in chapter 13, and it reads, Then Saul, who was also called Paul. So what's thought by most scholars is that Saul was his Hebrew name. Paul was his Roman name. Saul means desired. Paul means little. Are you with me? In the Old Testament, Saul went from little to in his own sight, to desired. But in the New Testament, Saul went from desired to calling himself little. I believe that there's two reasons that Paul referred to himself as Paul. Number one is found in Philippians chapter 3. Just two more verses and I'm done. You all right? Praise the Lord. Philippians chapter 3, verses 4 and 5. Praise God. Praise God. Philippians chapter 3, verses 4 and 5. Thank you. Praise God. Watch this. Though I might have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Now Paul didn't say he was head and shoulders or more beautiful, but he said, circumcised the eighth day, the stock of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee. I could be a big shot. What is he? Let's, let's go to six and seven if we can. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is of the law, blameless. Huh. Skip down to verse 8. Oh, oh, that's good. Stay there. But what things were gained to me? Those I counted loss for Christ. See, this Saul came to a place where he said, you know what? Forget the donkeys. What's before me is global. I just found out that God doesn't just love Israel. I think the donkey is speaking here. I don't know if this is even a donkey, but it kind of looks like a donkey. But this donkey says, you are loved. For God so loved Israel, the world. And what you've been invited into is global. And your season might be just... And I, I, I shouldn't even say just. Your season might be a mama. I'm not saying everybody's going to Malta. 
You might be a mother. But be a mother with anointing. Maybe it's grandma time. Be a grandma with anointing. Be a grandma with destiny. Come on, someone. Be a grandpa with purpose. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You might be at the tail end of the family in terms of overall life and your age and all that and thinking that everything's past, but oh, in the name of Jesus, there's still a king working on the inside of you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. The, I counted those things of loss that I might win Christ. So I believe that Paul preferred the name little to the name desired because he needed to keep himself in check secondly 1 Corinthians 9 and 17 and verse 19 we're going to read as well 1 Corinthians 9 17 and 19 and I'm done here watch this a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me I do it willingly. I have reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. And look at verse, two, uh, verse 19, if you will. For though I be free from all men, yet I have made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. I don't have to do this. God set me free. But I call myself Paul not only because I want to remain little in my own sight, but because I've got to reach this Roman world. And he was willing to use the Roman name to relate, to connect, to reach. That, that's the two reasons that I believe that Saul chose to call himself Paul. And I wonder if you could stand with me this morning. And if there's anybody in here that God's talking to you today about destiny, the anointing is here. And the anointing will connect you to your purpose. You're trying to find the donkeys. Forget about them. There's a greater purpose. And as you obey in that purpose your destiny will unfold your destiny will unfold praise God hallelujah you love him this morning praise God if you take a few moments to just gather in the altar this morning and say God these are days Canada needs an evangelist my family need an evangelist Hallelujah. Whether it's MacArthur or Noy or Butler or Brian. Hallelujah. Adams. Eko Sandarabahaya. Eko Takarabahaya. Hallelujah. Whether it's the tribe of Benjamin or Judah. Oh, praise God. Praise God. There's a destiny. There's a destiny. Forget about your donkeys. Itasamo, yeah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Summerside need a revival. Your community, your neighborhood. Hallelujah. Worship. Go ahead. Open your mouth. God wants to hear your voice. Hallelujah. God wants to hear your voice. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 